so you got your admission in your dream phd institute now what will happen what would be the first thing that you start doing do you start with your research right away no not at all whether you've taken admission in any university state central deemed or private or you are pursuing your phd from an institution of national importance you have to first go through or complete what we call as coursework now what is this coursework what do you study in it when are the classes of these coursework held what is the duration of coursework is somebody exempted from pursuing it and what happens if you do not clear coursework answers to all these questions about coursework will be discussed in this video by your one and only phd mentor advisor and trainer dr ritika gaba so keep watching this video and you will know much more about coursework very soon what exactly is this coursework coursework can be said to be a preparatory course or a refresher course which is made compulsory for all the students who are starting with their phd journey now most of us when we join or start with this journey we are not very well aware of what exactly research is how it is done how do we read papers how do we write them out also the subject area in which we are doing our research could have also evolved over time there could be new definitions new uh, methodologies new terminologies which might have been introduced in our subject area as well so as to ensure that we have the knowledge of research and up to date knowledge of our subject area we have the required skills to pursue a research coursework is conducted by all the universities and ugc in its 2016 phd regulation as well as in the forthcoming 2022 regulation have made coursework as a compulsory requirement for all phd scholars so what do you study in your coursework so research methodology and subjects related to research and statistics are extremely compulsory for you to study in your coursework also subject related to ethics so both research methodology and ethics are two subjects which have been made compulsory by ugc besides this there have to be courses related to your subject or your research area uh, also you can learn skills related to pedagogy teaching and writing in total as per the 2016 guidelines you need to study Uh, courses worth 8 credits minimum 8 credit and maximum 16 credits if you will be joining phd after the implementation of the 2022 regulation then you will have to study minimum 12 credits and maximum 16 credits so now if you are going to ask me that why will we all not choose to study the minimum number of credits that is because this choice is not yours this decision of how many credits you will study and what subjects you will study has to be made by the research advisory committee and the supervisor and they make this decision based on your individual profile qualification the chosen research topic and so forth so this is about what subjects you study now let us come to the next question how will you study the subjects that means where are the classes for the coursework held so the classes for the coursework are held in the university campus itself so yes these classes have to be uh, taken up by the individual student in physical mode there is an option of blended mode but that is only during pandemic like situation as mentioned in the 2022 regulation so yes you have to attend the coursework in physical mode this is what makes a part time phd also equivalent to a regular phd remember this is what we had explained to you in the difference between distance learning and part time phd uh, video if you haven't watched it we are sharing the link above so coming back to our coursework classes 
So these classes are held in the university campus. The full-time students obviously do not have any stress about it, but the part-time students who are thinking, how are we going to manage these, then don't worry. Uh, as per the information that we've gone through uh, about various universities, we can tell you that most of the universities are conducting these cl classes for their part-time students on Saturdays and Sundays. Yes, there are certain universities who say that no, the students have to come to the campus for, and stay here for two or three months. There are others who, who are saying that you have to come here and stay for a week's time in one month and then you can go back and come again the next month. So there are different universities following different uh, rules so as to fulfill the coursework requirement for their students. But majority of them are conducting these class line in classes on, on Saturdays and Sundays only. Now, what is the duration of this coursework? So this coursework starts when your registration for the PhD is completed or when your PhD admission is completed. So, and it continues for the next six months. So the first six months in your PhD journey is dedicated to coursework. After the end of the six months, you will have to give an examination and a viva based on what all you've studied in your coursework. And you will have to get a minimum of 55% marks. Yes, there is no relaxation for any category of student when it comes to these, this 55% marks in your coursework. So, what will happen if you do not uh, get this 55% marks or you do not clear your coursework. So if in case you do not clear your coursework uh, because of maybe say low attendance or maybe say you did not get that 55% marks, then the university is going to give you an additional six months. In this additional six months, you will have to redo your coursework, appear for the examination and viva again and this time try to clear it and get more than 55% marks. However, if even in the next six months or the second attempt, you do not clear your coursework, then what will happen? Then you would be told to leave your PhD. Yes, your registration would not be complete and you will not be allowed to pursue your PhD any further. So clearing a coursework, getting 55% marks is a mandatory requirement. What is this academic bank of credit and what is its role in the PhD journey of a scholar? So the concept of academic bank of credit has been introduced in the regulations of 2022. All those of you who are not, not familiar with these 2022 regulations, you can have a look at our three videos which are dedicated to the 2022 regulations. Okay, so an academic bank of credit is a digital account where students' credits are saved. The credits that they've earned in their UG, their PG and very soon whatever credits they earn through the coursework in their PhD journey will also be saved in the academic bank of credit. And UGC in the 2022 regulation mentions that these credits which they earn in their coursework can be transferred from one university to another. Why and how have not been clearly mentioned in the regulations, but we do hope and assume that what UGC is trying to say is that the part-time scholars, when they pursue their PhD from a university which is very far from their you know, hometown or where they are working, then in such cases, if the part-time scholars desire and if the universities permit, then they can pursue a coursework from another university which is closer to their workplace. After they complete the coursework and they get the required amount of credits, these credits can then be transferred to the parent university from where the student can further continue their PhD journey. But what exactly would be the use of Academic Bank of Credit is yet to be seen. 
can anybody be exempted from pursuing the coursework so only mphil graduates who are going to pursue an integrated phd can be exempted from this coursework provided they have already done a similar coursework and have got 55% marks then only there is a possibility that they can be exempted why i am saying it's a possibility because the final decision still lies with the research advisory committee if they are satisfied with the coursework that the mphil graduates have pursued is good enough for their phd journey then yes they can be exempted apart from them nobody no matter how many years of experience you have even if you are a jrf or a fellowship holder you are working in some high position it doesn't matter coursework has to be done by each and every student i hope this video is has given you answers to all your questions related to coursework if yes and if you haven't still subscribed to our channel then please do so leave your comments and tell us how you are liking our videos and what else do you want us to make videos about this is dr ritika gaba from zaid phd training and consultancy and we are here to empower you with more and more phd higher education well researched and genuine knowledge Thank you.